High Adventure. An innocent business trip into Bulgaria becomes a journey into hell. Tonight's story by Ron Evans is entitled Night Arrest. Ah, oh, there you are, Blake. Good. Come in. Close the door. Sit down for a moment. Yes, Mr. Billington. <clears throat> well, I suppose you must be wondering why I've sent for you on a Friday afternoon. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm sending you on a week's holiday. What? How does that strike you? Oh, very nice, Mr. Billington. To Bulgaria. Uh, Bulgaria, sir? Yes. Sophia, there's a trade exhibition there. I'd like you to go as an observer. Bulgaria's behind the iron curtain. Oh, God's wallet, Blake. It's more of a plastic curtain these days. Keep up with the times, man. Read your newspapers, not just the sports and comic strips. Uh, Mr. Pink. Now then, I have the official invitation here from the exhibition organizers. So you'd better take it. There you are. And I booked a seat for you Sunday morning, Heath Row. There's your ticket. It's a direct flight. Uh, well, this is all very sudden, Mr. Billington. I mean... I haven't been east of Colchester in my entire life. Yes, I've heard you're a bit of a recluse, Blake. Forty years old, aren't you, and still not married. Well, it's about time you spread your wings and saw something of the world. But, sir, I'm in the accounts department. Surely going to Sophia would be a sales rep's job. Well, I can't spare one, Blake. What with the recession ending and China now wide open for trade with the West? I've nine of my best men there right now. Nearly a million dollars worth of new business they pulled in this month. It's all expansion, Blake. Wonderful. What exactly will I have to do? Oh, it's quite simple, really. Uh, you've been booked for a week into the Hotel Byzantine, which is only five minutes' walk from the exhibition site. You'll take a briefcase full of our latest brochures and hand them around. You'll find dozens of reps who are interested in heavy engineering products. Just let it be known who you are. You get names and addresses, all that kind of thing. It's all a matter of using your common sense, Greg. I have to miss my Sunday go. Well, there's more to life than whacking a silly white ball all over the countryside. <sighs> so, that's about it, Blake. Yeah, oh, if you see Carruthers, he'll give you a letter of credit for a thousand pounds and all the brochures you'll need. So, have a nice trip. The weather in Bulgaria will be lovely at this time of the year. I'm sure it will, sir. <laughs> Friday was a bad day for Arthur Blake. He was a quiet man, unworldly and rather narrow in his lifestyle. He lived alone in a small semi-detached where he spent most of his time gardening, listening to orchestral concerts on his hi-fi or fussing over his stamp collection. His only outside interest was golf, which occupied his Sunday mornings. Then he would go to a quiet corner of his local where he would drink two pints of mild before going home. And now suddenly, he found himself being thrust out into the world for a whole week, and the very thought appalled him. On Sunday morning, he nervously checked in at Heathrow and was airborne an hour later, his stomach churning with horror that he saw the land fall away and the puffy white clouds beginning to swirl past the window next to him. Luckily for him, the airways provided a sick bag for passengers such as Arthur Blake. It was three in the afternoon, local time, when the plane touched down at Sophia, and Arthur thankfully made his way out into the warm afternoon sunlight. At the airport, he changed some traveller's checks and took a taxi to the Hotel Byzantine. His room was comfortable, and his window overlooked a well-tended park. Feeling even braver still, Arthur went down to the bar before dinner. To his considerable annoyance, they didn't have any pints of mild like his local, so he had to settle for a bottle of Polish beer. It was dark and vaguely sweet. And yes, it tasted foreign. He took his dinner in the restaurant and then went back to his room, resolved to take a bath and have an early night. He had no sooner taken off his shoes than... Oh, now, who can that be? Yes? Good evening. 
I am Major Gregor Rukas of the State Security Bureau. Here is my identification. May I come in? Why, yes, certainly. My two men will remain outside the door while we talk. What can I do for you, Major? Your identification first. Passport, please. Yes, it's here in my jacket pocket. Hmm. I'm, I'm sure you'll find it all in order. I hope so. Thank you. Arthur Blake. Where were you born, Mr. Blake? It says in... I know, but I want you to tell me. Wimbledon. You play tennis? Uh, No, golf. In Wimbledon? No, no, I live in Hampstead now. I see. And what is the purpose of your visit to Bulgaria? Oh, business. The trade exhibition? Yes, that's correct. Are you here to meet anyone in particular? No, just to look around. At what? Uh, the uh, heavy engineering exhibits. Anything else? Well, just to talk to the exhibitors. I hand out a few of my company brochures. And where are these brochures? Uh, here in my briefcase. Do you want to see them? All in good time, Mr. Blake. Are you using traveler's checks for money? Yes, and I also have a letter of credit for a thousand pounds. I see. I think, Mr. Blake, we shall go for a small walk. Wait, I... I was about to go to bed. I think the walk will do you more good. Where will we walk to? And why? To my office. It will be more convenient for us to talk there. I haven't done anything wrong. Did I say you have? This is purely a routine matter, Mr. Blake. An hour, perhaps, no more. Can you tell me why? I'm not at liberty to discuss the matter here. Please, Mr. Blake, your shoes. I'm not sure I should. You would be making a terrible mistake to refuse. I and my superiors would be... Forced into believing you have something to hide. All right. But please, I I do want to be back as soon as possible. I have a very busy day ahead of me tomorrow. I'm sure you have, Mr. Blake. Arthur Blake accompanied Gregor Rukas from the room, fighting back a feeling of blind panic. The two uniformed policemen outside the door fell in behind them. After leaving the hotel, they walked a distance of three blocks to a squat black stone building and went inside. After passing through two doors guarded by heavily armed policemen, Rukas barked an order to his uniformed companions, and then he smiled at Blake. They will take you to my interrogation room. I shall join you in a few minutes. eh? Rukas walked off down a corridor. One of Arthur's guards prodded him along another corridor, down a flight of stone steps and along a dark, narrow passage with a line of steel doors set into the walls on one side. Arthur's panic grew, especially when the policeman stopped outside one of the doors and unlocked it. Wait a minute! This is a prison cell! It's a bloody dungeon! Arthur was pushed forward and the door was slid to and locked. Light came from a dingy bulb far above his head. The ancient stone walls were wet and moss-covered. The only furnishings were a bare plank bed, a chair, and a metal pot filled with water. A small hole in the floor was obviously intended to serve as the latrine. Succumbing to his terror, Arthur flung himself at the steel door. Let me out! I've done nothing wrong! Let me out of here, please! Love of heaven, listen to me! What have I done? It's monstrous what you're doing to me. Please, please come and listen to me. Don't leave me here like this. Please, please. (laughs) Mr. Blake? What is this? Have you broken down so soon? What are you trying to do to me? You have been in here less than ten minutes, and I find you weeping. I find that quite strange. I'm scared as hell, that's why. Could you tell me what this is all about? I think you know. I don't know anything. Who really sent you to our country? Mr. Billington. I I didn't want to. He forced me into it. All I wanted to do was stay at home... I should have known something horrible like this would happen. 
It always happens when you mix with foreigners. You are the foreigner here, Mr. Blake. It's not the same thing at all. I'm not a proper foreigner. I'm British. Ah, yes. Which brings me around to the subject of your passport. It is forged. <laughs> forged? But that's impossible. I got it myself from the passport office. According to you, yes. But it's true. Tell me. Tell me, why have you really come to Bulgaria? To spy on the new Soviet missile base at Constanza? You, you think I'm a spy? Oh, no, that, that's absurd. Is it? Can you explain the automatic pistol we found in your briefcase? A gun? Oh, no, you must be having me on. I've never touched a real gun in my life. I'm being very patient with you, Mr. Blake. But for your own sake, you must tell me the truth. I am. I am. Then explain the weapon and the map we found stitched into the lining of your suitcase. God. Mad. Am I going mad? If you insist in playing innocent, I shall be forced to hand you over to Sergeant Savak for intensive interrogation. No, no. Oh, this can't be real. I'm sure you must have seen in movies what the medieval torture chamber looks like. The rack, the boot, thumb screws, all that kind of thing. Well, Sergeant Savak is an expert, and he has such a chamber only a few meters from here. <laughs> you know, he even has a brazier and branding irons. I, I won't listen. I, I refuse to listen. It can't be real. This is a dream. I, I went to bed, and now I'm dreaming, having a terrible nightmare. Oh, this is real, Mr. Blake, or whatever your name really is. If you are not prepared to cooperate, then Sergeant Savek will be allowed to have his way with you. <laughs> no. Now then, shall we start at the very beginning? What is your real name? The name of your superior officer... And who you have been instructed to contact in Bulgaria. Oh, I wish to heaven I was a spy. Then I can tell you all you want to know. Is it lies you want? I have heard enough lies. And now my patience is exhausted. <laughs> Sergeant Savik, <laughs> take him away. He is all yours. <laughs> Obvious and easy. If you have a business providing a good service or selling a product, you need to let people know. But how do you do that? Easy. Just tell them here on SpringbokRadio.com. Internet radio is about talking to people in their own homes. Your message becomes part of the sound they've chosen to listen to. To find out more about advertising on SpringbokRadio.com, contact Dave Dupria on Johannesburg 011-678-5176 or for outside South Africa 27116785176 or email Dave at SpringbokRadio.com. When it's gone, if you want to help, then this is what to do. Make sure the water hog is never, never you. Just make sure the water hog is never, never you. A huge, burly man entered the cell as Rukas left. Sergeant Savick was accompanied by two policemen. They roughly grabbed Arthur and stripped off his clothing. He was then frog-marched out of the cell along the narrow corridor and down a steep flight of stone steps. Arthur's eyes bulged in horror at the sight that met his eyes. Rukas had been right. The chamber he was dragged into was a medieval torture chamber. The only sign that it was the 20th century were the two fluorescent lights set high in the stone ceiling. He felt sick and faint. Savick barked orders to his assistants and Arthur was strapped onto a circular rack. Arthur alternately cried and sobbed. No, 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 please, don't, 
How do you like my workstation, eh? A pretty sight for an enemy spy, don't you think? I, I'm not a spy. Honestly, I swear it. <laughs> Major Roca says you are, and I prefer to believe him. I came here for an exhibition, I oh, tell you. Oh, oh, now you are the exhibition. God, oh, well, please, I... shall we get to work? You surprise me, Englishman. Most suspects break down just at the sight of this chamber. I've broken down too, believe me. I'm terrified out of my wits. No, you cannot be, I can tell. You only pretend to be afraid. Why should I do that, for heaven's sake? To make us sympathetic and ready to believe you are innocent. I, I, Let me explain to you what there is to look forward to. The wheel you are strapped to is capable of pulling your arms and legs from their sockets. <laughs> A very painful experience. <laughs> Noisy, too. You're sick. But back to business. The wheel, uh, rather slack at present. Oh. Rodescu, swear as a dog to me, then. No, 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 please don't. No. Oh, oh heaven help me. You make such a lot of noise, yet we've barely taken up the slack. What do I have to do to make you stop? Just tell the truth. Major Rukas asked the questions, and I'll call him if you want to provide the answers. What's this? Oh, boy. No, 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 please, please, no more. I'll tell him everything. Are you sure? Yes, yes, I am certain. Slacken off the wheel. I cannot do that. I'll call the Major, but I must warn you. If you are bluffing for time, you will regret it. That is a promise. No, no. Sorry, sight, Mr. Blake. The sergeant tells me you want to cooperate. Yes, yes. Just let me off here, please. I'll, I'll tell you what you want to know, please. Tell me, and then you can come off the wheel. You, you didn't have to take away my, my clothes. It was very necessary. Humiliation is part of the treatment. It uh, brings a man down to the status of a caged animal. <laughs> All his dignity and resolve fades away to nothing except for a desire to survive. Now... Now to business. You are a spy, yes? Yes. Name? Uh, uh, Reginald Charles Ogden. Service number? Uh, uh, 334-079. Oh, strange one. Are you telling me the truth, Ogden? Yes, yes, it's, it's a new department. Who is its head? Uh, Brigadier Summers. He isn't on my list. Uh, what was his former position? Uh, I don't know. Very well. We'll come back to that question later. What was your mission here? Uh, to gain information on all the Soviet installations here. And who are you to contact for assistance? Uh, nobody. I was to work on my own initiative. You're lying again. No, no, it's the truth. Baby. How could you tour the country and get your information without assistance? By train. You found the map. Uh, the map didn't tell us much. But all the sensitive areas were clearly marked on it. Hmm. Yes, it's possible that you are telling me the truth. Oh, yes. We can go into the finer details later. Why did you risk bringing a gun into Bulgaria? Oh, to defend myself, of course. The custom officials could have found it. I, I, I hid it. Where? In my trousers. Why didn't it affect the alarm system at Heathrow Airport when you passed through? It was arranged for me to pass through a separate entrance into the departure lounge. Hmm. Sergeant Savick, I'm sorry to have to deprive you of your night's work. Hmm. Take the prisoner back to his cell while I go and check on the information he's given to me. I hope you've been telling me the truth, Mr. Ogden. One lie, and it's back to Sergeant Savick's playground. Feeling weak but relieved... Arthur Blake was unstrapped from the wheel and marched back to the cell. Never for a moment would he have believed it possible to be thankful to be back in such a place. But at that time it seemed like paradise. He sat for a while on the wooden chair after putting his clothes back on. He wondered how long it would take for Rukas to find out he had invented the whole story. An hour? Perhaps two. And then back to the torture chamber. The steel boots. He shuddered. 
Death would be better. Ah, yes, you look more dignified now, Mr. Ogden. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised to find you told me the truth. I, I did? I mean, yes, I, I had to. The place was more than I could bear. A confession is being typed out by one of my men, which you will sign. Then it will be all over. Does that make you feel better? Wonderful. It should be here in a few minutes. The execution will be at eight in the back courtyard. Execution? Well, the usual reward for captured spies, is it not? But this is monstrous. Surely you didn't believe we would let you go. But I, I did everything you asked of me. I cooperated. It was that or Sergeant Savak. In my opinion, the firing squad is the far better choice. So that's what it was. A choice between death and torture, followed by death. Exactly. Ah, this is supposed to be the confession. Carlo Rogia, here. Ah, here it is, Mr. Ogden. Just sign each copy on the dotted line at the bottom, will you? I can't read it. I... I don't know what it says. It's not in English. This is not England. What it says is of no real interest to you. Now, please, sign. Sign my own death warrant. What did I ever do to deserve this? You became a spy. Now, kindly sign. There you are. Thank you. Well, I'll see you when they come for you at ten to eight. Have a pleasant sleep. For a while, Arthur stared at the steel door that separated him from freedom, from the world he had seen so little of. His earlier panic had subsided, and now he felt strangely calm. There was nothing he could do to save himself, and Rukus had been right. A quick death was infinitely preferable to Sebek's barbarity. His mind pondered the outside world. All the good things in life he had missed because of his reclusive habits... If he could live it again, life would be different. He would make friends, become a more social animal. He sat on the edge of the planked bed. Sleep was out of the question, of course. Time dragged slowly until he wanted it to be eight. It was better to get it over and done with. And then he heard it. Time. I'm ready. I didn't bring you breakfast. We consider it a waste of valuable food. Shall we go? Yes. Slightly stooped, Arthur marched with his executioners up the flight of steps, down a long corridor and out into a courtyard. The sun was shining, and he straightened himself up, determined now to face the final ordeal with a show of bravado. The guards stepped away from him, and he found himself in front of a car. The rear door was opened, and Major Rukas was sitting inside. The driver was in civilian clothes. Morning, Mr. Ogden. Please, get inside. What is all this? Do as I ask. Close the door. Is this some more of your torture? I'm to be executed somewhere else? <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's nothing like that at all. Where are you taking me, then? There is a flight for London in an hour. Your things have been collected from the hotel and are waiting for you at the airport. What? Oh, this package contains your passport, money, and other documents. I... I don't understand. You are free to go, Mr. Blake. We found you were telling the truth the first time around. <laughs> I must say, though, that your second attempt was very convincing. What happened? Oh, no doubt you will learn the truth in due course. I suppose the world looks a better place now, eh? Oh, I'll never whine again. Believe me, I'm ready to enjoy every minute. Oh, by the way, 
You can have this. It's my confession. Oh, not really. It was really your acceptance of an apology given by my government for your mistaken arrest. So you knew I was innocent when I signed it? Yes. You bloody sadistic swine. I spent all night thinking that I... It was that necessary. Please believe that, Mr. Blake. It was vitally necessary. The gun and the map you claim to have found? Oh, those. <laughs> well, they didn't really exist. I think the whole incident is best forgotten. Please, have a nice flight home. Had an exciting time, I hear, Blake. I'm back from the jaws of hell. Oh, Major Rufus saw you out safely, didn't he? You, you know of him? Oh, yes, one of our great operatives. Great chap. Intensely loyal. What? Oh, well, I suppose you deserve to know the truth. You were used as a scapegoat, Blake. No, that's a bit hard on you, I'll admit, but it was essential to get in a genuine agent. The Bulgars were tipped off and they were looking for him. Now, I sent you so that Rukas could use you as a smokescreen while the real agent got through. Oh, no. Yeah, it was a bit tough on you, I'll admit, but well, you came out unscathed. There was very little risk in it for you. Oh, yes. I'm an administrator of special intelligence services. We're rather an elite little group of hellraisers. <laughs> right, now, now, now then, Blake. How soon can you get the Atkinson account ready? Should have been finished last week. I know, sir. I was a bit pressed for time. Yeah. Well, you better get on with it then, Blake. Not before I tell you what I really think about you and your damned elite little group of hellraisers. And after that, I'm going to resign and enjoy life and all the petty vices I've been missing. High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.